Takamichi is a dumb piece of shit. I said it early on to us watching it, and I'm saying it again. Fucking idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Herbal Synergies, the shop. I am your host, Sinji. With me, of course, my co-host, Herbay. What up? What's up, Herbie? How you doing today, man? Shoot. I'm hanging in there, living life. Living a Viva Loca? Nah, not low Viva Loca. Just regular old life. Regular old life. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Now, I mean... Mm, Yamate. Yeah, no, nah, you stop. <laughs> yeah, so you know what time it is. Flavor of the week. Mm-hmm. You or me, you or me. What's up? I'll go first. Uh so mine is when Yeon she gets like a drag ball Z like aura of spiral flames. She powered up, you know, she went Super Saiyan for the first time, was getting ready to destroy uh, the angel girl. So, yeah. Mm-mm. We'll get more into that later. Okay, mine, I can't talk about. But. Mm. You can't talk about. Just know the Tokyo Revengers. And this one's going out to our boy specifically. I'm talking to our boy specifically. I'm caught up. And I wasn't okay. Hmm. Sounds like a What just happened problem. was not okay. Yeah. Takamichi is a dumb piece of shit. I said it early on to us watching it. And I'm saying it again. Fucking idiot. Ugh. It could be dumb, but, you know, that's a quality that, uh... No, 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 no. Yeah. It's you just know, a quality I like Faji, so, but I accepted it. I don't accept what I just read the other day. Hmm. But... What might be more interesting to talk about right now is this motherfucking Irby got me to watch a Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan. Yeah. And, what about it? And <laughs> this has to be the most interesting interestingly non-violent anime that's kept my attention for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Is this messed up? This, but, yeah. this man, his his sole per- job, his the source of his income, Uramichi that is, Yep. It's to be like on one of those kid shows, you know, like fucking Barney. It's the only. Barney, Blues Clues, the, yeah, the type there, of there shows. There were kids involved, though. Like, Barney was the only one I saw kids yeah. involved that I know of. Yeah, um, what, Sesame Street, that kind of deal. Yeah, that, that kind of like had kids involved, yeah. Yeah. But the man is blatantly open about how fucking depressed he is. Yeah, and, and how he doesn't want to be there. So, it's pretty pretty hilarious. So, so it'll be... In case none of you have seen this, it, it's hard to go play-by-play play on these episodes. I, like, I stopped. I gave up after episode one. I'm just like, I can't. I can't. I just have to watch this. I just to watch yeah. it and take it in for what it is. So, yeah. it would be like, okay, it's time to sing the ABCs. And it would be just like, but we're not going to sing the ABCs. We're going to sing my song. 
the right kids. And the kids are like, well, why'd you change the song? And then we meet you in a very dark background. So you're saying, because life's not always what you expect it to be. You should learn that now. You might yeah. not grow up to be happy. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And it's just a whole bunch of series of those things. Those moments where, like, he goes all script and the director seems to love it. Director. Yeah, direct, he's a character. But go on, Irby. This, this is your show. You go on because honestly, I wrote nothing. Uh, I just wrote down the the messed up quotes because you because you, you really can't go play by play because I don't even think there's a plot at some points. It's just messed up stuff he says. So that the first in the first minute, I was like, damn, because <laughs> uh, he. He he's talking to the kids and like the kids like why is your your uh voice ho- horse he's like my voice horse from all my all night of hard drinking I was like damn yeah it was just like minute oh. in oh and then and then they hit the catchy ass fucking theme song yes I was like well, okay it's not catchy but like the yeah. stupid ass kid theme song by the way outro way better than intro yeah. It it it's pretty it's pretty catchy. I was like, oh, might have to watch this uh, some more. But um, yeah. So anyway, one of the kids um casts a spell of him of uh, like preservation of hope, and he's like, then he ends up telling the kids, don't end up like him. <laughs> uh, so it's 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 pretty funny. And then I also have another thing written down, and he talked about he says something about the workforce. And he's like, uh, the kid's like, what's the workforce? Yeah, he's like, enter the workforce. You know, it's where you get mocked and rejected and shot down. And um, then he tells the kids keep a, a list of people that did that did that, that did him wrong and reject them. And then uh, he tells them to sucker punch him. I'm like, you done that to a little kid? My favorite moments are the moments with the bunny. Yeah, the bunnies. He's always I, trying to I, set him up, and the dude's just like. Yeah, it it I I think there's a weird dynamic there too. So and like then... <laughs> the show has a bunny and um a teddy bear and on the script the kids in Udamichi are supposed to call them out three times before they come out. But Udamichi is a heavy drinker and smoker. So yeah. his lungs cannot do three times yelling. So he told them to come out in two yells. Well, they did it the first time, and when they go, and like his voice got fucked up when he went back. It's like, I thought I told you, come out after the second time we called you. So they go, like, but the script says three. I say, I said two. My voice doesn't like three. Yeah. So when they do it again, and he calls out again, and it'll come out, all you see is his head inside the curtain. And they were like, we're not going to come out. And then they see him and say, we'll be right there. Yeah. I, I forget their names, but uh, yeah, they're pretty, oh, they're pretty hilarious. They're side yeah, they're characters. Psych- <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so some more messed up stuff. Um, then he tells one of the kids, if he doesn't get his rest, his, his facial muscles will die. Because <laughs> it's like, are you going home? He's like, yeah. But then the little uh, kid questioned the female. Um, Akatano, and it was like, um, no, 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 Luke, they questioned him, and he was like, uh, asked him why he's married and doesn't have kids, and then he tells everyone life is different, and he spends his evening drinking and watching bad TV. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> and then he told the other kid his, uh, will to live was gone. Shh. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, when you grow up, you have to uh, make yourself happy or, or the ones you love will pry you off like a tick. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention that one guy that laughs at any perverted joke, like anything that involves yeah. a penis. Ikatero. He's then, cracking <laughs> up. <laughs> what gets me too is the... Um, Back to one of the little kids, he starts coughing. He's like, "Are you coughing because all your hard drinking?" <laughs> so that was messed up. I and think that was he, like he, at the end of an episode or something. 
Yeah, and he was like, um, he. This was gonna be my other quote. Um, he says like a little piece of his soul gets torn away every day, and he's like, you know, some 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 games go long after you you give up, and he's like, like the game of life. I'm like, damn. <laughs> You know I what? Felt that. You know what? That could be something we do um, while watching this. Instead of like doing play by plays, let's just come up with the quotes that got, yeah, that got us. Who's like, damn? That's what I've been doing. Uh, so, but yeah. I episode three completely ruined this for me. But by by the end of episode two, when the bunny guy was in his apartment. Banging his pinky toe on dumbbells. Yeah. And like my man had like a genuine smile while he was smoking. I was like, oh, maybe this is the start of like him turning his depression around. Uh, it could be. I'm I'm not sure. Nah, man, because homeboy came into the building full of energy, and, and then came out of the ended. dress room fucking depressed as fuck. Yeah. He's like, well, whatever energy I just had was just my mind trying to uh, hide the facade of me being a miserable or some shit like that. I'm like, Jesus, yeah. dude. <laughs> what the fuck is your deal? Yeah. Uh, so, so like episode two, I have a little wrote down a little quote. It was like, you can keep running uh, on fumes as long as you fake a, a smile. I'm like, dang, that sounds like something I would do. And then his uh, definition of positivity is pretending everything is okay when it's not. And um, he's kind of like, uh, the, the sun just keeps rising no matter what you do. So then this is where they do the little umbrella song. And they answer a fan letter. And the fan letter is like, who would you rather marry, Urumichi or Ikateru? And then she, uh, 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 Akino is like, she's like, uh, don't marry someone smart or funny because it isn't a good substitute for adult skills. <laughs> and she she starts crying and breaking out because her boyfriend. And what else got me was uh, she like misplaced her whole kind of anger on the boyfriend onto those two, which you know every human does that where they have misplaced aggression on people that they shouldn't have it on, which is it's just funny for some reason that she was doing all of that. And then Urumichi draws this little night terror that they seem to adopt in the show. <laughs> that was at the end of the ep in episode one where he did a little night terror, and then they end up decided to make it um, make it a, a mainstay. But I don't even know what the fuck like, that thing is supposed to be. Like it has a mouth, but it also has a beak. Yeah, it, it's a night terror. It's something crazy, and like he was like, I don't. I think that in the episode one, he's like, I don't have a friend or anything, but this little guy haunts me in my dreams every night. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'm just like, man. But then the kid, the next episode, was like, well, you held we on to it and friend. you named it, so it, should, it must be your friend. Yeah. I was like, I, so. I mean, you have a name, so. Uh, yeah, so then uh, they all get a day off, and you see it, you see a side of him where he uh, gives, he gives a cat a, a fish, and then a seagull takes it, but he... He's like, I'll stick around and give you another one. And then so um, pretty much nothing happens there. And this is where the guy stubbed his toe. And uh, yeah, episode three, not not too much here. Uh, they all get new costumes and stuff. And this is this is the funny skit of the bacteria guy. And. Uh, yeah, they, I forget the bacteria guy, but it doesn't matter. But the old scene with the old ladies where they dressed up. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was like, uh, he's like, yeah, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? And, you, and, and stuff. And he's like, uh, you have a moment to discuss it. And he's like, they asked him if he believes in Jesus. And he was like, I don't even believe in myself. <laughs> and he goes to work. Uh, <laughs> And the rabbit sets him up, and the and the kids um, ask him if he's a good artist, and he can't draw, but Ikutero can draw well. So, and then he draws a night nice character, and you know, contemplates life and whatnot. Man, his boss got him with the director got him with the setup, bro. Hook line he and did. sinker. It's just like, 
would you prefer to work late or come in early? <laughs> like, neither. But hypothetically speaking. Yeah. And I was like, the, oh, follow me. Character. I was like, damn, yeah. bro. Yeah. I thought you had some pull because you were saying a whole bunch of, like, shit and, like, the director wasn't doing nothing, but the director don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. And then other parts when he was dead, where he was like almost comatose, and people was like, "Oh, he's dead," and he's like, "No, sadly, I'm not." And then he's like, Dude. "I'm like, damn." And then another thing I had was, uh, sometimes evil people win, and they shoot the scene. And the, but then they shot it again. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he took a a pop up psych psychoanalysis test, which was uh kind of crazy, and then. Because I think he drew something, he's like, it's supposed to be a dog. And everyone's like, I have no idea what that is. You so. know what I thought it was? Um, I've seen it somewhere before. Ghost Dog? Where have I seen Ghost Dog? In your dreams? It'll come to me eventually. But there is a dog that looks exactly like that. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. In your dreams. But yeah, that's it for that. I think it was Don't have much else. No. You're not even old enough for Scooby-Doo. Ooh, I think it was in Spongebob. Mm -hmm. Don't even care for Spongebob. Whatever. Um, what's next? What's next? What do we got next? Whatever you want to pick, big dog. Um, I didn't... I don't really... I guess we could say re-zero re for the, the last... Yeah, I was going to start talking about Chojin a little bit, but it was like, Chapter 2 was kind of weak. There wasn't there wasn't much in there. Um, most of it was just animation picture slides, so. Yeah, so like, just to go over Chojin X Chapter 2 real quick. Um, the rundown is you find the girl that was on the plane in the beginning of the first chapter again. And mm -hmm. she's, like, laid out in a construction site. But He's then... Ugly. But then, um, Smoke Chojin guy shows up and starts chasing her. And, like, she steals a scooter. He steals a scooter. Don't know where he got his from. But, um... Then she realized she wasn't fast enough to escape on the scooter. She's like, if only I had a tractor. She ditched the scooter... He couldn't and she ditch found it. The tracker. <laughs> yeah, and then it was just just a tractor there. And then my man finds his biker gang and he's like, "Hey, get that girl!" I'm like, or if you want a flip phone, he's like, you're not the boss of us. How about we just take it? So he like, I think he kills one of them. Yeah, does something to him, knocks him out. Yeah, and then they're like, "Okay, let's get that girl." And they're all wearing what horse masks. Yeah, on some sort of garment. Yeah, so they're chasing her, and she's doing all this crazy fuck ton shit on a tractor, keeping away from bikes. I don't know any I, tractor that can outpace a bike. Me either. <laughs> That's why I was like, how the heck is a tractor that fast? She must know how to open up some gears or something. Yeah, man, so like... Um, she leads homeboy into getting his car hit by a truck that says driving team practicing safe driving. Something like that. Which was ironic, obviously. Because the yeah. dude just ran the fuck out of a car. Yeah. But I guess she, she and all the other bikers rode off a cliff. Yeah, they, they flew off the edge. And, and then, uh, yeah. home homeboy caught up to her again and was just like, "You're a perfect candidate. You were infected by my children. So like, humans can be infected by other childrens if they're a good candidate. I I have no idea how it works yet, but um, yeah, someone got stabbed with the children needle, and um. Apparently the plane was the whole thing where he he um, infected people on the plane just to see who he could or who had who had the potential or whatever. Mm-hmm. So 
And then some some random children superhero shows up to save her. Bro, the face. The fucking face. And she was all hard eyes about it. Yeah. This man looks like he was the rough sketch of fucking Wreck-It Ralph. Dang. But with blonde hair. And I'm just like, oh my god, she loves this guy. And he looks like that. That is great. But the real fucking plot twist is not finding out she is a chosen. For me, it was finding out that our other homeboy, I forget his fucking name. It wasn't a mask at the end of the first chapter. His face actually looks like a that. Cute yeah, his face doesn't revert. And I was just like, oh boy, oh man, oh no. I thought it was just a mask. My boy, you're fucked. Yeah, sure is. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, mm. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, it wasn't too much there. Nothing too spectacular. Do a little, um... You want to do a little Tower of God or you want to do Jujutsu Kaisen? I, I don't feel like there's a lot to go over in Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, shoot, I didn't even read that. Oh, that didn't? came out. You didn't read Jujutsu? Nah. All right, that's fine because it wasn't much of a chapter anyway. So we'll just do this one and tomorrow's chapter next week. Yeah. I okay. Guess we guess we have to then. <laughs> All right. Do, do Tower of God then. All right. So, um, Bam entered, enters hit the tunnel. He doesn't have much points. Sachi team decides that they need to take out Horquin for it's too late. And they want to do this before they help with the surface. They don't want them to get the copies. Um, and then you switch to the, the candy lady, end up fighting a member that killed Tachi. And they flee and they bounce around and they hit the little yellow pads and Yeon falls and she begins to fight with the metal fish woman, Angel. And then you flash back to Eon asking the crazy fire guy to teach her how to control flame. He's like, you can't be serious because you are flame itself from the day you were born because you're part of the Eon family. And then Eon hits her with a super hot flame and then bam, finds the group. So then Toe starts to fight the members that killed uh, Toshi and uh, he activates a, like a hell in a chain thing, which is unique. It's a ability gifted to him by his master. The change can't vanish unless he dies and Bam can't pass. And so Yeon is fighting the angel woman and she's getting mad because all Yeon's doing is defending. So she attacks Hongo, who is the bird. And then Yeon gets mad and figures out how to do some flame tricks. So more like how to lose her fucking mind. Yeah, I think she's she had an out of body experience. <laughs> but uh anyhow, she get this is this is when she gets the Dragon Ball Z aura of the flame, turns Super Saiyan one. I don't know if she has Super Saiyan two, but we'll see. Uh, so she hits her with a f spiral flame attack. Honestly, it's more like a Kaioken. Okay, well. Right now, I'm just saying it's Super Saiyan, just because. I could revert Coward Ken later after more information is presented, but still. So she, so the angel notes that she looks like a lava and rage. And the, the angel's mother, we, we get a little backstory of her. She was a woman who fell for a ranker, and her mother hated her anyway because the ranker just kind of just used her. And then she sold Angel away. And then we flash back to why Aka is on the train because he has lingering business. And uh, Muntari gets cut in two. And uh, Busar Elliot is found out that's Tochi's killer. And then my man Bam unsheaths his needle, breaks the chains. Um, and then they do the, the, the internal monologue between Bam and the needle. And apparently he possesses the power of an emperor. And then Bam says to the power, you're scared. Those, you know, 
then he, he says, those who try to step over someone else to get up higher are actually only running from one from some fear that they cannot see. I was like, damn, that's insightful. And trying to step over someone's Cali, and Bam doesn't want that Cali power or to be that Cali person. Bam and is just a wise, um, like, he's very insightful for someone who grew up in a cave. Yeah. Which I kind of feel like, um, I had, a, I had another thought about that too. I think I wrote it down at the end of this chapter. But, um, at some point. But, um, yeah, I was thinking, like, maybe Bam was someone important and he, he forgot his, his amnesia or forgot his way. And, and then he found, found it or something, or he kind of has repressed memories or something. I don't know. But, yeah. But anyhow, um, Without giving yeah. away anything, you actually have the right idea, but like you're you're not on the right track. Yeah, I but mean, go on, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking he he was some important, but then doesn't remember or something. Yeah, packed seal, something goes down. Don't know. Got many more chapters left, so um, yeah. The person that Bam's fighting is the Mad Dog of Struggle. The stronger the opponent, the stronger he gets. And then Bam has a power, power up, and then Dion burns everything. And Barrow, the candle, candy lady, tries to snap her out of it. Eon flashes back to when she was young and learned her, her power. And they were telling her she got to be aware of her power or else she could hurt innocent people. And then they all fall down. And Bam catches them. And, uh, Evan and Yuriha is, is questioning Bam's growth. She's like, oh, man, he grew that much in this short of time. And Sir Yama, the, the powers that be, you know, they're already set up a, set up a winner. And uh, they you find out that they set the whole game up and how people should move and the points they move based on the matchups they wanted. And Bo, Bo, uh Ulisar tells Bam who uh, Horikun really is. And then Horikun finds Boro, Sachi, and Aka. And uh, v Visante divulges the way uh, him and his siblings became one, a spell of soul eating that makes many to become one by eating each other's souls. And they were called White, and they were a fug god. And White is the 10th of the 11th Slayers. Um, yeah, they like to play with human life. And uh, one of the worst incidents killed a whole bunch of people. And then he was defeated by a Jihad Prince and lost a Slayer position. He disassembled to be a Slayer at a later date. And then Rachel joins up with the group with, you know, or trying to attack Khan. Fucking Rachel. Yeah. She is something else. And so we find out that uh, Anna fights with a jar that melts souls and, and juices. She, she's uh, weak in sword training, so that's why she learned sorcery. And then my man Sachi cuts the flood in half of the juices and stuff and then proceeds to fight Anna. And flashback, Sachi noticed that there's a change of Rowan after she murdered. And Sachi reflects on his cowardice to not approach uh, Rowan about it. And then he also thinks that he killed her because he thought it was her that had to be sacrificed to seal Ho Quinn. But anyhow, and then so Anna was weak, so she had a fighting doll. And then Aka protects Boro from the, the melting juice that falls on them. Says he doesn't want to live with someone else's death in his heart anymore. And then Vasante tried to sneak up on Ho Quinn, but they know they're there, so they start fighting. Man, Kun decides to end the game as quickly as possible. And uh, we find Vasante was better known for defending versus sword fighting. So that's why Ho Quinn's having a hard time defeating him. And they talk about their childhood and the ways in which they were similar and all sorts of stuff. And the reason they separated was because Ho Quinn used great magic. 
which I don't think he's supposed to do it or something. So then Vasante admits that it was all a mistake to team up, and Ho Quinn committed many sins, and Sachi sold a part of his soul to get stronger. And Vasante uh, has some of Bam's mindsets where he can't give up and stuff. So I see they're kind of similar. And then one of the copies is on Vasante's team, and that's David. And he he's inhabiting Wangnan's body right now, so. And then Bam races to the team that's going to fight Hoquin soon. Eon suggests that they, they create a shortcut by by bending the pipes and going through the pipes. Then we flash to Daniel's request for a favor. Wangnan stabs him, but he doesn't know if he hit his heart, so well hit hits Hoquin's heart and uh and then he says his brothers betrayed him and and David doesn't want to be a part anymore. He just wants to live his own life. And then we find out the other people, Vasante, Anna, David, Albadetta, and Hoquin. And then we find out that the demon gave Hoquin the, the stuff he needed to become the big old slayer person. But, um, but let's see here. Oh, man, was yeah, he gave it to him. Power. Yeah, he said he gave him one slip, but, um, he deceived his brothers. Yeah, hold on one sec. No problemo, sir. Uh, Tower of God. So good. So good. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. So he, he was deceived. He gave him the stuff. And then, yeah, he wanted to make him a Slayer nominee from the start. And then Ho Quinn unleashed a new power and knocks out David and Vasante and says, since Daniel betrayed him, he's not going to bring Rowan back to life, and that's where it ends. Hey. So, yeah, how, do you, so. how do you feel about Tower of God since they entered the Hell Train? It got, it got a, little, a, little, a little different, a little weird. It's not too bad. Got, got a little of, different. Got a little weird. Yeah, definitely picked up. I think it's still better than Weak Hero, but hey, that is currently picking up. Yeah, it's a little. It's better than Weak Hero, but I think a little less than uh, Tokyo Revengers. Putting it somewhere in there. Gotcha. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But anyhow. Re motherfucking zero. Yes. Episode. What episode is this, Irby? 11. Episode Rim. 11. We get a little history. Yeah. So, turns out, Rem and Rom grew up complete opposites of what they are now. When they were born... Rom was the powerful one and Rem was the helpless one. They were gonna kill the two twins as they do with all twins because one horn, half the horns, half the power. But as soon as they were about to kill, I think they were gonna do kill Rem first. Rom activated her horn and backed everyone up. And ever since then, she's been a prodigy. Now, one night they were attacking. Did, could, did you understand why there was an attack there? Like, do you think they were coming after from after Rem? It made it seem like they were coming after Rem, but That's I think I it was. Like. I think it was other. It was something else that was going on. I don't think it was. Was that maybe their village was being raided? Yeah, or something. And um. Rem was late to the party, goes out to see what's going on, sees fire and everything. And right before she's attacked, Rom saves her, but then gets her horn cut off. Yeah. And you see a slight smile on Rem's face. And ever since then, she's been regretting the relief she feels from 
being better than her sister or like her sister not having a horn anymore because then she wouldn't be better than her and ever since then she's been trying to do her best to replace Rom to compensate for that day but she never feels as if she would measure up yeah so um going back to Subaru and Rom carrying Rom away Ren comes to and she's like oh Why'd you guys come back? There's no point if you come and I don't do it alone. But then Subaru calls her stupid for trying to do things alone. Fucks up the whole saying two heads are better than one. Say three heads are better than one. Which is still true, but... He hits her with a Tanjiro headbutt to snap then, her out of it. <laughs> and he starts bleeding. And um, he tells them to go. He'll stall. So he's fighting the wolves, and then the little shaman dog turns into a big shaman wolf. And Subaru pulls off some black magic, and then stabs the dog in the neck. Now at this point, I thought that he was going to make some shit happen. Yeah. He didn't, but I thought he was. Yeah, and I right, thought he was too. Yeah, and then right before he was about to get his ass handed to him, Orochimaru came in for the win. Roswell for the win. Yeah. I was like, okay, look into you, Lord Roswell. So, um, he steps in and, um, then Subaru wakes up and Rem is there holding his hand and she goes over her insecurities and things like that about her sister and... Trying to make her feel better, Subaru basically tells her, demons have a saying um, that when talking about next year, they laugh. And the way he was explaining that saying made me feel like he was thinking the wrong thing. Like, I feel like the way, the way it sounds to me is like, demons laugh about talking about the future because they live in the present. So who's worried yeah. about it? But he was just like, oh, you need to laugh because that's what demons do. Yeah. So let's talk about tomorrow and laugh. Yeah, he was like, be the horn that Ram doesn't, that um, uh, Ram doesn't have. And then we we kind of see that um, Ron, Ram and Oswald are, are kind of have a thing. So that's why I was thinking like, yeah, it was just like I, I wrote that at the end of this um episode. It's like Roswell and Rum have a weird relationship. Yeah. But then you see him touch her like the scar where her horn used to be. Yeah. And I'm like, does Roswell replenish Rom's powers? Yeah, because he said he used up a whole lot of mana this weekend or or not weekend, um this this week or whatever. So I was like, huh. Cause I that's why I was thinking like maybe he went on and like maybe they were coming to get one of the the twins or something and he happened to be there and like stopped them from rampaging or something. I don't know. Yeah. So then we go on to episode twelve. But I did have one little one little note mm -hmm. though. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So about the bike, was it like? The witch's curse, or you think it was the bite that like did it for him? Because it, because it was was the bite part of like the witch's curse? Because it, it was kind of weird, you know. Was it like actually because they smelt the the witch's curse on the bite? I think so. I'm I'm like, which one is it? No, no. So like, the witch's curse is what makes him keep coming back to life. The bite cursed him to, like, die in his sleep or something. Yeah. So when he got bit by, like, every fucking dog in the forest, they basically described it. Like, they basically 
describe the curse as like a pair of headphones in your in your pants like with the with the wires like the more bites you have the more wires there are and like those things come out of your pocket tangled up no matter what you do and with that many mm-hmm. curse bites it'd be impossible to like untangle them so like even if he died he would have came back anyway because of the witch's curse mm-hmm. which seems to get the scent gets stronger every time he dies i guess yeah because um what betty said the one time he died was how do you sm- how does the smell even stronger than before and it must be because every time he dies the magic gets placed on him and that that's just it's recurring it must linger yeah mm. but yeah the child they also find the child disappears from there so continue yeah, I, I'm like he's been to that village how many times, and he just noticed the new girl. Like he, I'm sure he doesn't know about her yet, but like Subaru could have picked that out. Yeah. Now, I wonder if every time he died trying to get Rem and Rom's trust, since his scent was stronger, was it harder and harder to do? I don't know. Might have been. But in episode 12, you know what sucks about this? What? Since we don't do live reactions, my predictions amount to nothing because, like, I have no proof that I predicted things. But, like, Mm. I saw two things coming by the end of this episode, and I was like, I knew it. I knew it. And it was like, fuck. You did. Can't prove it. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. But... Um, we we fast forward episode twelve. A Subaru and Amelia go under date in the village, and she's wearing a hoodie. She's covering up her face, and it's probably because like even in the village that Roswell watches over. Um, her appearance doesn't exactly rub well with the villagers. Because maybe they were, she reminds them of the witch. Of Envy. Yeah. And then, you know, they just have a moment going, um, and they go back to the, what would you call the household? A mansion? Castle? Somewhere in there. Fortress. Fortress. Yeah. An abode would suffice. And Amelia has to go to, a, we'll call it a conference room. As Subaru was about to join her, she was like, nah, you stay here. I got this. You're too rowdy. Yep. And then we find out that, then he starts talking to the, the servant downstairs. He tries to spoof him up with tea to try to figure out what they're here for. And he's like, nah, not having a dog. Yeah. And this cat lady, presumably, comes down, meets him, is like, oh, so you're the guy. Felix. Yep, Felix the cat person. Yeah. It's like, oh, so you're the guy. And Super was like, what? They were talking about me? And they go in the carriage, and we have this little moment, I think. I think this is when we have this moment with Felix and the old guy. He's like, you're not one to indulge in conversation. He's like, that guy just, um, his... The look in his eyes interests me. He has the look He's of someone. He's stiff. Yeah. yeah, he has the look of someone who's died multiple times. Uh, well, face looks like face death. So, but yeah, he's Will the Sword Demon. Mm-hmm. Continue. So, um, Subaru goes and meets up with Amelia, and they find out that. It was for him because he damaged his gate, his magic gate, and it needs to be healed. And then he finds out Amelia is going to town because the candidates have to go into town. And Subaru basically forces himself to tag along, as he does. Amelia always gives in to Subaru. 
which is going to come up again on something I have to talk about later. But Amelia usually always gives in to Subaru. So they go hmm. into town and they, um, they're they holding hands because Amelia doesn't trust him to not run off. And then they show this cutscene when they're driving, his head's out the window. And Rem calls Subaru cute. So like it, it seems like Rem is crushing on Subaru. And Subaru's crushing on Amelia and who knows what the fuck Amelia's doing. You're just living the best life. Uh, not in episode 13, she's not. <laughs> You wait till you get to sixteen. What? What do you mean? <laughs> Just messing with you. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck do you mean? Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Don't do that to me. I was gonna yeah. tell my friend to watch ReZero, but it was like, you can't, you can't start yet. She was like, why? Because I'm stuck watching three episodes a week. I don't need you to. Pa- I don't want you to pass me. Yeah. But Just they're keep in it town. Going. And Subaru finally bought some apples from the Apple guy, which it was refreshing to see him. Yeah. Then they go to find Reinhardt so they can figure out what happened to Felt. They get stopped by Julius. Or Julius runs Reinhardt. In. Yeah, Julius runs into or sees Amelia. And Subaru gets immediately jealous. And, like, from, from the get-go, like... Julius didn't like Subaru. Subaru didn't like Julius for the wrong reasons. Julius doesn't like Subaru for just his appearance and how he portrays himself. Which, by the end of episode 13, you can't really blame Julius. Yeah. I did it anyway. Like, I didn't like Subaru the last two episodes. I love Subaru Natsuki. Yeah, I didn't like him the last two episodes. Especially hmm. that, la- especially episode thirteen. But um, we'll get to that. So, yeah. Amelia and Julius go to look for Reinhardt, I guess. But like, again, Subaru tries to join them. She's like, "Nah, it's best if you don't wait here for me. I'll be back." And then my man sees this orange hair woman go into a uh, a alley with those dogs. Mm. Those three same thugs. The three same thugs. And he's like, are you guys the only thugs in town? (laughs) Yeah. But then he tries to scare them off. He's name dropping Reinhardt. And the old man shopkeep shows up. What's his name? Um, Shoot. I think it's old man Rom. Yeah, it's old man Rom. Okay, yeah. And And he asked for felt. And he asked for Felt, and then Subaru's like, oh, you didn't hear? Reinhardt took her after everything was said and done. He was like, hmm, so the castle. And then we don't see him for a while. Yeah. So then Amelia and Julia show up, and they basically swap peoples. Like, Julius goes to the orange hair lady, Subaru goes to Amelia, and... Lady is so spoiled, she's never seen an unpeeled apple. <laughs> so, yeah. Subaru gives her the appa. And, um, they part ways. And so, it must be royalty. Mm-hmm. Well, at that moment there, I was like, I bet she's a candidate for, um, queen or whatever. I bet she's one of the candidates. At that moment, I saw her. She's like... Mm, she's spoiled. She has to be royal because she's never seen an unpeeled apple, so she's being served. She's probably a candidate. And that's probably why Amelia got so quiet around her. Yeah, I figured she didn't want to be seen by her. That's why she drew her hood a little closer and then hid behind Subaru. Yeah, so I was like, does that girl happen to be one of the candidates? And then... um. Come to the day where Amelia has to go to her meeting, Subaru wants to go with her, and he's, like, begging her. Amelia's like, no, 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 because you can't, like, you won't be able to control yourself. So just do me a favor and stay here with Rem and show me that I can trust you. Obviously, as soon as she left, he, and Rem's part to blame for this. Rem caved in, but Rem likes Subaru. Like, I'm convinced. 
There's nothing. He does. Yeah, ra- there's nothing Subaru can't get Rem to do right now. So, of course, he didn't listen to her. He went to, he started going to the conference, met up with, um, got picked up by Orange Hair Girl and her. Miss Priscilla. Her helmet knight? Yeah. Yeah. And it gets taken to cancel. And they get taken. Council. As his has her errand boy for Appos. So yeah. they enter in and of course Amelia is shocked to see him. Roswell shocked to Roswell is not shocked to see him. Yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely not shocked to see him. And Amelia's about to throw a fuss. Like if he gets if he's allowed to be here, then he should be on my side. So which means she did want him on her side. But I guess she felt like she couldn't bring him. Even though Orange Hair Lady got away with it. Yeah, the orange haired lady, Miss Priscilla, only brought him there because she thought he'd be entertaining. Mm-hmm. So she said everything that she does works to her benefit. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then, um, then I I, I wrote this: "What I don't let Super get you to come like you knew it. This chick is very yeah. All right, so orange haired lady seemed very entitled, and Super broke." Subaru broke Amelia's trust in him immediately. Didn't even try. Yep. Then Reinhardt and Felix show up, and we find out that Felix is a guy, not a lady. <laughs> yeah. Felix, Felix is a male name anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then we meet the other candidates, the green hair lady, whose name I didn't get, and the purple hair lady, whose name I didn't get. Yeah, they come in later. Mm-hmm. And right before they introduced the fifth candidate, I was like, wait. I thought to myself, is Felt a candidate? Yeah. Uh they well the the whole prophecy, they did a new a new engraving on the, the stone that was like, Oh, yeah, there's there's an, gonna be another candidate or something they they were saying. Mm-hmm. Because the stone changed. And then Felt comes out and it, hey, listen. I can't prove I predicted it, but there it goes. Felt, the fifth candidate for a queen. Do you know what they're candidating for? Um, To be... The ruler to dragon enter, something? Yeah, to be in our covenant with the dragon. Mm-hmm. But I kind of figured that anyway because he was like, exactly how old are you? And he, she's like, I'm around 15. And he's like, 15? Because... Um, because someone, I figured some, she was important because she was an heir to something that of someone that went missing a while ago. So I was like, oh, she's probably important. But what was weird was how he found out. Like, she had Amelia's pendant. So how did he put two and two together? Because the pendant probably glue a little bit. And he was like, wait. And then he was like, oh, you're 15? And it was like, oh, you've been... You kind oh, of look that familiar makes sense. or something. That makes yeah. sense if the pending glue a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Because it, cause it was, because when Subaru held it, it was a dull red, but when she held it, it was a bright red. Got it. If that, if that makes sense. Yep, got it. Okay, so that, then we start episode 13. And my first thought was, Felt is definitely not ladylike. And then she straight. <laughs> She acts not ladylike, and I'm like, "Yep, not ladylike." And orange hair was it orange hair lady that calls felt a bitch? Yeah. Yeah, she she tries to fight him. Yeah. Felt tries to fight her. She calls felt a bitch and then attacks Amelia for resembling the witch of the envy. I'm like, "Damn, bro." She kind of reminds me of the of bitch from uh, Shield Hero. <laughs> yeah. <A little laughs> that bit. that is her official name. No yeah. one attacked me. <laughs> per um, Malfume. Or Malfumi? 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 Yeah. I need to get into Shield Hero again. Season 2 coming out. You, you do. Um, you need to get into something. 
Roswell would want a Subaru to snap. You can tell by his face. But like, as soon as they started attacking Amelia, uh, Subaru snapped and Roswell was happy about it. I don't know what his end goal is, but he, he was definitely like, yes, this is what I wanted. Yeah. And then, like, Subaru did some weird pose. Like, he tried to bow, introduce himself, but, like, his feet were spread apart. And it just, it looked weird. He's a sucker. And then he declared himself Amelia's knight. Which is the only reason Julius was beefing with him so hard at this point. Because he discredited all the knights in the room. But he was too stupid to realize, like, hey, I, I am her protector. I don't have to be her knight. Yep. So, in the midst of this confusion, the purple hair guy is like, you're not strong. You're not smart. You didn't go through any of the training we went through. How are you a knight? And then in the midst of that confusion... Old man shopkeep dude sets old off. Old man rum. Yeah. Oh, no, no. This was before he sets it off. Amelia interrupts Subaru, kicks him out, and the council go uh, say that's a fitting represent, uh, representative you have there for so the likes of you. Meaning, menting, meaning as an insult. And after she kicks him out, he's like, I understand. Yes, he is. But he is not my companion today. Yeah. And then she goes back. And then the smoke bomb goes off. And Rom tries to kidnap Felt. Uh, Reinhardt clears the dust. The guards catch him. And Felt's like, no, leave him alone. And the guy, the guy's being a dick. And it's like, you revoked your candidacy. Therefore, I don't have to listen to you. It's like, oh, so you could listen. You just don't want to. Yeah. And Felt's just like, fine, I'll run. Now let him go. He's like family. And they're like, fine. And Felt, everyone declared, stated what they wanted to do. Um, Orange hair girl said she just wants to be spoiled, basically. Um, purple hair, green hair girl says she wants to put the dragons in their place so that they will never be a threat there's something along those lines uh, a yeah. small purple hair lady just wants to be entertained and spoiled just kind of like the orange hair lady amelia wants equality for everyone and felt said if i get this throne or whatever i'm burning this fucking town to the ground yeah <laughs> i was just like yeah i i kind of like felt right now yeah i was like mm, burn it to the ground i, I like felt She's fucking wild. I like it. Yeah, I felt she, she's a good girl. So, in the midst of this, Julius holds a mock battle and challenges Subaru to a battle where normally he'd want to execute him, but for Amelia's sake, they just use wooden swords. And um, he's getting his ass beat. A knight reports that they're fighting, but it's so one sided. It's the only reason he reported. And Felt's like, well, don't report it if you're not going to tell us we finished. <laughs> yeah. She didn't even care. She did not care. He's and, like, you could have just told us that it was done. Yeah. And then Amelia goes running and sees Subaru. And then he's like, he does his magic spell, which he, prom he also promised he wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. But Julia sees right through it and knocks him out again. So then we go forward to the Subaru and Amelia scene where basically Subaru says he was doing it for her. Amelia says, no, you were doing it for you. I didn't ask you to do any of that. I asked you to stay with Rom, Rem. I asked you not to use magic and you did. I, this is why I can't trust you. And I won't trust you. But she was getting really emotional with it. And then she ends it with... No, she didn't end it with this. And Subaru gets really, like, creepy. And he's just like, 
this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for me. This wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for me. It's because I am here. Your debt to me should be unrepayable. You should be begging to have me in your presence, something along those lines. And Amelia's just like, you're right. My debt to you is great. And I'm about to pay it all here by saying bye. And she walked away. Yeah. And I was just She's... like, Super, you fucking dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> what she the says, fuck I'm... is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, um, she she didn't want um the special treatment that he was trying to give her. He just wanted him to look at her like he looked at everyone else. So So yeah. That was terrible. So, like, I'm foreseeing Subaru killing himself soon? No. You don't think so? Mm-mm. You don't think he'll just kill himself to try to get a redo? Nope. What do you think's going to happen then? Hmm. I don't know. I don't foresee him killing himself. Tell you that much. All right, well, I guess we're going to find out next week. Herbie, you got anything you want to go out on? Uh, anything I want to go out on? Nope. Maybe go out on a bang. Okay, cool, cool. Big bang attack? Nah. No, just a regular bang attack? Yeah, small bang attack. Small bang attack. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Actually, we won't find out next week because next week is tournament time. You won't find out next week. And I, I could be wrong, but the tournament, Irby, correct me if I'm wrong, is a waifu tournament list? I have no idea. That's I think not it's my... waifus. I think, I think it is waifus. That's not my realm. Listen, all you gotta do is find... What do we do? 6-6-4? Six, six, and four? I don't know. That was 16. I don't have any. It even 16, yeah. So 6-6-4. Six, six, all you gotta do is come up with like you can do four if you want, a smaller number, but you just need a list of waifus. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll discuss that with um, our buddy off off the air. And guys, hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you next week. Peace. Peace.